Hi there, this is Max from Erudition Color, and today I'm back with a long overdue update. This is Density version 2.0. I've rebuilt the Density DCTL from the ground up, and I've been able to improve it quite a bit. But first, if you need a reminder what density is all about, essentially in this context, what density means is we're lowering the brightness of colors as they become more saturated. And the reason we do this is because if we think about a filmic image, the way that we create more colorfulness is always by taking away light. We start with a white screen and in order to get more brighter colors or more saturated colors, we have to take away light from the screen. If we want more red, we have to take away cyan. And that means that the, the richer our colors get, the darker they get. I think this is a great example. If we look at this dress, this dress is very red, but something about that kind of red that it is feels strange. It almost feels emissive, like the dress itself is emitting red light. And that's not something we would see in a movie shot on film, for example. It's not a very filmic way of reproducing that red. So what we can do is we can increase the density with the slider here. And you can see immediately, we're not really changing saturation. It stays very, very red. But what we're changing is the reproduction of lightness in the saturated colors. And it places it much more firmly in a filmic kind of world. Again, if I turn this off, you can immediately see how video-y, how fake, how emissive that dress feels and how much more integrated into the picture it is and how much arguably just aesthetically more pleasing it looks in this image. Let's have a look at this image because this might be a very problematic image. We've got these very bright neon rods in the foreground. We've got all kinds of things going on and this is really to showcase how clean these density operations in this new version are. If I turn on the density again, Again, we can immediately see how rich and beautiful these colors get, but we've got two more options that we can now engage. The first one is this preserve highlights, and this can just help us clean up these rods in the foreground just a little bit. And the other one is this depth slider, and what the depth slider does, if I turn this all the way to the right, you can see that the skin tones are now not affected and that is because the depth just controls how much of the lower saturations are already affected by the density. In this case you can really see I push this all the way to the right and my skin tones are completely cleaned up while for example the lipstick still gets a lot of that effect. And you can see how clean this is if we zoom in we have no effect whatsoever on the skin but we have a really clean effect on all of these reds in the dress and in the lipstick. And this is how you can get very transparent density operations without affecting the skin tones, for example, as much, or also other lower saturation colors. If I just dial in some density without the preserved secondaries engaged, we get a uniform density across all colors, more or less. But if I engage this preserved secondaries, you can see that our secondaries get protected and you can see that the yellows get protected more so than the cyans and the cyans more so than the magentas. And this is just to take into account that different colors can take a different amount of density before they seem to become a little bit muddy. And that's why the slider is for it just helps if you want to dial in global density, it just helps you get that ratio right without having to think about it even more. Another improvement in this version is that I've improved the fall off between colors so that now, as you can see, the transitions here are incredibly smooth and that will really help you get very clean results, especially when using this tool on a timeline level. And I've also implemented some of the guardrail functionality that you might already know from my more advanced Iris Pro DCTLs. For example, here we've got a total budget of density that we can spend. And if we've already spent it all on the global slider, we can't introduce any more density with those individual sliders. On the other hand, we might want to introduce a little bit of overall density, but then increase the density on just some of these sliders to fill up the remaining budget. And that is something we can do, but we can never go past that full amount of density that you can see here. And the reason for this is just to make sure that we don't accidentally break the image. 
by introducing more density than it can take. And as you can see, we still have the methods here. We've got spherical and tetrahedral. I have removed the HSV method because I've come to the conclusion that I just don't find it clean enough and that you're much better off using one of those. If you want my recommendation, I think most of the time spherical is going to be the best option because it is by far the most transparent option. We can just compare these against each other. You can see tetrahedral is a bit thicker, but it also removes a little bit of the three dimensionality of the image. Also, one thing to note is this depth slider does not work in tetrahedral. It only works in spherical. So whenever you're doing especially timeline level stuff, a look development, and you want to make sure that you're really clean and transparent. This is when you want to use the spherical mode. And the tetrahedral mode can sometimes really work on individual shots when you want to go a little bit further, but it is definitely a mode that you have to be a little bit more careful with. And that was just a quick overview over the density DCTL and the new features in this version 2.0. I hope you found this useful. I hope you like the tool and I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very, very soon.